What is up, 7-3 fans? Welcome back once again to the 7-3 Garage. My name is Brandon. If this is your first time tuning in, this is a two-part video series for a KC Turbos drop-in balance assembly install on Frankie's 1999 F350. So if you have not seen the last video, go ahead and check that out. You guys can see the parts that we have. They're gonna be going on the truck today. And uh, so you're up to date as to what's been going on the past couple of videos here with the 7-3 Garage. So, uh, real quick, we are actually uh, sitting in traffic. Well, not really traffic. Uh, the bridge was up by Frankie's house. He lives on the other side of the Intracoastal in South Florida. So a little bit of a small inconvenience here. So we should be rolling in just about a second. But wanted to give you guys the quick download for today. We have our parts. We are hopefully, I think Frankie said he's going to start working on some stuff. Just getting some basic things out of the way for us. So that'll kind of help us on our time. But we're going to get that turbocharger off, show you guys how to do that. And we are going to go through step by step, basically how to break down the factory turbocharger, uh, show you some anatomy again with some parts, clean everything as we go. You guys know again how I like to do things. And we will get all the new parts installed, get the turbo back in. And then finally, we are going to go for a test drive to see how the truck feels. So traffic's moving and we should be to Frankie's in just a couple of minutes. We will see you in a second. Yeah, we are pulling up right now. Go see the man himself. Now I'm really jelly of Frankie. He's got this nice little shop. Ta oh, it's in the, not attached to the house, it's actually on the back of this house, but ooh, there she is, you got her in the garage. Yeah, last time we had to fight a little bit of rain in South Florida, if anybody lives down here, you know how the weather is uh, kind of doing whatever it wants, and uh, there's actually real no legitimate forecast, so we are kind of in the dark here with, with the rain situation, but it looks like he's already got the hood up. So let's get over there. Just carrying parts as always. Hey, bum. I don't know what he's, never know what this guy's doing over here. Hey, I dropped this thing on the way in. Is that all right? Yeah, make sure there's Does a that couple fit? scratches in it. Holy smokes, that Dude, fits. I made it fit. I had to pull the coolant reservoir out and I leaked coolant everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We're already filming, by the way. Check right that out. On. Dude, nice. Yeah. You guys remember last, uh, was it last week that we did Matt's truck? Was that last Saturday? Uh, yeah. That was, yeah. So we, uh, last Saturday, um, we were just here, so it's, it's actually nice to be back. Is it, though? It is. It is. It's your truck this time. Yeah. I'm kind of worried now. Why? Why? You think it's not going to happen? No, it's my truck. Oh, no. Something, you'll be fine. going to happen. We're going to be stuck. <laughs> is that 8 mil? Yeah. I don't know. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to actually... Um, I'm going to get this over here. You guys have already seen these parts. I'll give you a quick little glimpse here. I rebuilt uh, super. I've only rebuilt one Super Duty Turbo, but it has been a little bit since the last time. Ooh, we got some good fan going. So just to show you guys who haven't seen yet. Oh man, I cracked my screen protector on my GoPro. I don't know how that happened. There she is. Woo! Yeah, I think this is okay if you drop this. Nice balance assembly. I think a one one drop rule. If it hits the ground more than once, it's no good. Just kidding. Yeah, she looks awesome. So we are pretty excited about this. This is probably where we're going to be putting everything together. And just a one more quick uh, view here of the rebuild kit. All our bearings. This is a 360. I think it's a 360 thrust bearing. Could be wrong. Our snap rings, gasket seals, O-rings, everything. I'm going to see what Frankie's got going on, and we'll be uh, we'll be right with you. Frank's hard at work here. Oh yeah. We made we actually made pretty short work. I'll show you guys real quick. We actually made pretty short work. We got the the driver's side. Uh, intercooler pipe off so that's out of our way you can see this all needs to be cleaned up so we're going to be doing all that but the turbo should be off shortly here uh the hardest part was just trying to disassemble all this stuff getting the, everything unplugged and you can see this is just i don't think this has this ever been off frank have you ever had this off any of this off no, no, no just, so just the, uh, turbo yeah so just the turbo pipe so he's had he's had the truck a couple years but he's never actually had this off so it is gonna obviously you guys can see it's got a lot of nice thick grease on there so the, and there's Actually, these are orange, <laughs> believe it or not. So we're going to get those degreased and cleaned up just like we did last time. And we made pretty short work of that. But uh, we only have, we got the downpipe V-band off. So that's important. And we have to get the uppipe V-band off. So we got a kind of a double V-band game here. Once that's off, there's two bolts that hold down the turbo to the top of the pedestal. And it's basically out. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to keep working here. What do you need? Look at those. Need that is a diesel hand, if, I, if, I, if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Is that thing giving you a hard time back yeah, there? Yeah, we need a hammer with the flathead. Here's the, the hammer flathead. and the flathead's right there. So we're gonna see if we can get this on video for you guys. See? See if I can get a good look at it. Is that light dying in there? Maybe just, aim Maybe just there it is. Uh, it's kind of hard for everybody to see, but 
it's loose. He's got the, the bolt is definitely loose back there. Just gotta get that edge. We actually had to, the the clamp that, that's on the outlet of the turbocharger, we actually had to, had to bump loose. And that's O-ringed as well, but that had never been taken apart. So that was kind of a, a newer experience. I'm used to these things coming right apart. So it's figure 20 plus years of heat cycling or 20 years, 21 years of heat cycling. That's what's gonna happen. You guys, a little bit of an update here. So uh, first things first, we're gonna try and clean some of this stuff up. Actually, that's the least important thing right now. But so there's two bolts here, the 13 millimeter, they attach and how well you, everybody can see that, but they attach, there we go. Those two bolts hold the turbocharger assembly down to the pedestal, okay? So you have one here, and you can see the other head of the other bolt is just in the rear there. If I can get my camera in. But it's just in the rear there. So we've been spraying it with a penetrating solvent. These are extremely tight. Obviously, again, after 20 years of heating and cooling, they are going to tighten up. This pedestal is just made out of aluminum, I believe. I don't think it's steel. So we are uh, we're gonna let this sit for just a couple minutes here and try and uh, and try and get that off that also that rear clamp is extremely tight let me just trying to adjust my camera that rear clamp back there the rear v-band very tight as well so our hope right now is to see if we can bump these two pieces of hardware loose and then hopefully shake loose the v-band because it is pretty on there so Frank's hanging out. Oh, we got Joe hanging out too. Uh, we're we're uh, we're doing it. Frank uh, decided to put his purse down and actually put some some ass into that. So we actually were able to get him off. So he's just finishing the finishing the removal. Obviously, leverage is your friend um, to a certain extent. I think uh, there's been multiple times we we're just laughing about it that you can put a lot of ass, if you will, into a bolt and you think you got it and it breaks loose and you actually just pull out a, a snapped bolt or just the head of the bolt, which is always fun. You have a whole nother problem in your hands, but Frankie is definitely making short work of that. There he goes. I like the positioning too. That's the expert uh, 7.3 mechanic, <laughs> mechanic <laughs> positioning when you don't have when you have a, a hillbilly uh, topside creeper mate. So that's what we're doing. That's coming off pretty easily. Let's hope everything is in one piece and not broken. Was should be good. 30 mile thread bolts. Mm -hmm. So our last thing that's holding that turbo in is the clamp, correct? Yeah, that's the, it. The V-band in the back. Just the V-band. So once we get right. these two bolts loose, hopefully we can wiggle it a little bit. So you know, come right out of there. Yeah. So we are we're gonna do that. Frank just busted it loose. We were able to get it off there. So just gave it one all good whack, just staying with it. Use a little penetrating solvent, and uh, out she comes. So well, I spoke too soon, but <laughs> I think she's still attached a little bit. Yeah, the, that V-band will definitely hold on tight. Uh, see, Frank, see if you could reach back and maybe spin it either way. I think it's still stuck on the on the turbo. Oh, uh, there you go. I think you're off. You're off now. You're totally off. Oh, I'm still stuck on one side. On the edge right there? No, there you go. Yeah. Watch your, little... watch your finger up in there. Nice long pry bars are good. One, two, smack. Not on it now. I think you need to come up and just like rotate the. Oh, yeah. There it is. That's probably what we want to do. A little determination. There she is. Mm -hmm. A little determination will get it. Now we're still hooked up a little bit. Wastegate's not hitting, though. <sighs> No, it gets frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're still stuck on something else. Is the downpipe hitting? No. What else do we got over here? Shine still... that light. You got that. Shine on the left side to see what you got. Shouldn't be anything. Looks like there's something back there holding it. It looks like it's clear for me. Want to come out. Here's our last culprit. This can be a little bit of a pain. We're trying to reach under there and do this. This is the exhaust back pressure valve retaining pin that holds that rod that actuates a little butterfly for fast warm up. So we're actually going to reassemble that on the truck. But here comes Frank with the turbo finally. What are we at for time? We started right at 12, it's 12.49. So 49 minutes to this point, which I'm actually pretty proud of. Nice and easy out of there, watch those high pressure oil lines. <laughs> and done. Oh Woo, boy. ain't she pretty. Yeah, let's hope we didn't break anything too important. Yeah, we'll have to 
we'll get in there and maybe pull that pedestal off and clean that up. We do have new O-rings for the block, so we'll do that. Yeah. That all looks pretty good, actually. Perfect. Not too bad. She's, last time she was on there was uh, at Ford. Yeah. <laughs> coming, coming to you, or not coming to you, but... Like this O-ring is missing here. Might have just fell down somewhere. Yeah, we got, we got two sets, actually, of those. They're Perfect. included in the rebuild oh, look, kit. I found it, yep. Sweet. Cool. So we are going to get this on the table, get to start disassembling this, and we'll show you guys uh, the steps from there. Turbo's on the bench. just want to show you guys. I know uh, when we worked on Lee's truck, we showed you the little wrench trick there. These are uh, these are a 12-point bolt head, so you're going to have to make sure you either have a, a socket that's a 12-point or an actual ratchet. But this is, you guys can see what Frankie's doing. Hopefully it looks familiar to you. Using the old mechanic technique to get these out. If these things like have never been touched, and again, we got these nice wrenches, but we... We broke this one. <laughs> broke this one. I broke the teeth in it. So yeah, the teeth broke off on. Well, it didn't break off, but it broke the mechanism inside. So this works pretty good. I'll, I'll see if I can hold it so you guys can see how well this works. But you basically get the wrench on there. You have someone else hold the other side of the of the of the turbo, and you give it a little bit of ass and put your purse down. And that's it. The sounds are a little scary, but it works very very nicely. So we're gonna finish getting this uh, this back off here. Also. You guys have heard of the EBPV delete. Basically what that means is removing that rear uh, butterfly flap here. So Frankie actually has a welder, so we're gonna try and get this off, cut that wheel out and slap some weld up in here. So that'll free up that exhaust flow. So we'll show you how that's gonna be done. We've got all the bolts out of the compressor housing. These are the same, these are an eight millimeter. We'll work on these, kind of the same deal here. But this, uh, once you get that off here, the best way I've found is you kind of work from the top to the bottom and uh just again nice and easy take everything off clean as you go so we're going to get everything kind of organized up here and, and uh, we'll get everything clean but the way to rebuild the whole center section is once you get everything apart you kind of there's four pieces of hardware i don't want to get ahead of myself here but there's four pieces of hardware very similar style bolt that is straight down and we're going to have to take remove those in order to get the back of the compressor housing off and before we do that, we got to get the compressor wheel off as well. So this will spin right off. This is reverse thread, I believe. I just want to double check. So instead of righty tighty lefty loosey, lefty tighty righty loosey. So we're gonna uh, just double check. I may be I may be mistaken, but I'm gonna confirm. Compressor wheels off. Ended up using a nice set of vice grips. The factory, uh, the rear part of the actual <laughs> blessings. Corona. Corona. Uh, the back part of the turbine wheel does not have anything really to put a socket on unless you wanted to beat a socket on there but um really wouldn't advise doing that especially if you're if you're just doing the rebuild to freshen up the middle part of the turbocharger i kind of wouldn't advise against that so we ended up getting the vice grips in a nice position here where that frankie was able to get enough leverage against me and pop this loose it really isn't that that tight i think that maybe 12 or 14 foot pounds so the compressor wheel's off, and like I was showing you guys before, here's our hardware now. We're gonna bust these off, get that off there, and start getting the whole center section taken and, uh, taken apart and torn down. And uh, we're gonna clean our hands up, because when we put new parts together, we definitely don't wanna get them all nasty. So we are gonna get going on that. All right, everyone, we got the parts basically all, all cleaned up here, degreased, everything's looking pretty good. Got the new compressor wheel and shaft all apart. We're gonna start sliding stuff on here. I'm gonna hand the camera over to Frankie so we can See what we got here. So once you get all the, the bearings and everything off, have everything separated. This is the large snap ring. This basically slides over the end and you just kind of work it around the bottom of the turbo here. Turbo, the bottom of the of the shaft. I may need a, um... come on, sweetheart. There she goes. Thank oh, yeah. Since there Brandon's is. taking so long to get that thing popped there off. She oh, there she is. Go. Woo! We'll just show you a little comparison of yeah. the... Uh... You want to feel a difference there. Oh, yeah. Here's that one. So you can see the angles of the of the wheels are definitely different. Yeah. Here, I'll switch you. About the same? Oh yeah, I didn't say they're about the same. About the same. But it's gonna look nice and pretty. We're gonna get these bearings moved up here. Crank torquing down. The compressor hold down bolts. These are we just looked up a spec online, just a Ford factory spec. These are 12 foot pounds. So four of them, same thing, kind of cross pattern. If you guys are familiar with doing uh, auto mechanic stuff, which I'm sure most of you are, but if you're not, cross pattern is the best way to do this. So you can see Frank's just working those things around nice and easy. We're gonna go ahead and get the compressor housing on next uh, and the exhaust back pressure valve. Frankie decided to leave this for now. We're kind of running short on time. So we're just gonna get this back installed and do this another day. Hook that back up to the truck. 
no big deal. We have a couple other parts we got to finish up degreasing and intercooler pipe and clamps we're working on. And we should be coming up here pretty soon to get this thing fired up. So I'm going to keep going. Just missing the compressor housing. We want to show everybody basically the final product here. And we think it came out pretty good. We're pretty happy with it. Not too bad. Just a couple hours. Again, very time consuming. Just trying to get everything where we want it to be. Compressor housing is going to go on. We'll get those all tightened up. We'll get this back house, uh, house, house, <laughs> housing back on, like I said, and we'll be ready to reinstall this thing. Home stretch here. Got everything basically dialed back in. We did find some small things that we realized we're gonna have to just tweak in the future just for some, uh, I don't know even what you wanna call that, Frank, just satisfactory things, making everything kind of tightened up, if you will. Yeah, we got a couple dry rotted hoses that we gotta yeah, kind of go back and fix. Um, other than that, went together pretty smooth. Yeah, pretty happy with it. Frank's just finishing getting the intake on, and we got to get the coolant reservoir back on. The reason we took that off, you guys saw this morning, we've worked on this all day, the old trusty OBS uh, <laughs> woods, that worked out pretty well. So we're going to get uh, this off there. We're going to get the coolant reservoir back on, and we're going to be ready for a uh, fire up here, a little exhaust sound, and a test drive. So Frankie's getting the intake on. We're good to go here. Uh, Frank's got to add a little bit of coolant, but we're going to go ahead and give her the old test fire. Go ahead, Frank, let her rip. So we have power steering. Oh, it is probably coolant on the belt. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea what that is. Uh, let me check and see if it's leaking oil. That'd be good. It's gonna leak, it's gonna leak like right now really bad. Yeah, I think that was there. Yeah, we're good. We're good, Frank. That's a we can deserve a trophy for getting that through there. Look at that. Woo! it is the second day we had a uh, little some difficulties yesterday Ooh, that's a very american truck you guys could see that thing going by <laughs> Woo! um anyhow we had some difficulties yesterday uh it was it was hot it was the end of the day we started getting tired and kind of frustrated uh so decided to just kind of wait and see what happens so today's actually monday and um decided to put a boost gauge we kind of rigged it on there i'll show you guys real quick just rigged the boost gauge on there the truck wasn't making the boost like it should have the turbo didn't sound right and come to find out, we had two issues. Number one issue that we found yesterday, we forgot to hook up the exhaust back pressure, uh, actually the actual valve itself, or the butterfly itself on the actuator. So when the truck was on, it would just basically shut the, the valve and the thing was getting no, was it wasn't able to move any sort of exhaust. So it was just black smoke central, uh, which is not what we were looking for. And the other thing we found today uh, I'm actually at Frankie's work. He's actually on lunch break right now. We went over, we, we popped the hood. This truck just still didn't sound right under the hood. It sounded like it wasn't making the boost pressure it was supposed to be. Ooh, that's way better. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if I come to find out one of the clamps on the intake Y was loose, like almost limp wristed. So that was actually the fix to our problem. So we're out here driving it around. Feels awesome. Overall, the product is amazing. The turbo spools up way better. He doesn't have any gauges right now, but we're going to get there. But Frankie is definitely happy about it. Yep. So very stoked that this thing is running the way that it should be now and um that's basically it guys so overall huge thanks to uh casey turbos they really took care of us on this product and this and this little project here so big shout out to them guys don't forget to check them out i have their link in the description below so go ahead and check their product out if anyone's questioning this product they should buy it the answer is going to be yes for me so check it out and the turbo search problem is fixed Pounds. 20 pounds. You can even feel it right now the bottom end feels, well, the top end, I should say, feels a little bit better. Damn. <laughs> As always, guys, we do appreciate your time and attention to all of our videos. We work hard to try and keep you guys entertained and informed. So thank you for constantly keeping the 73 Garage on your radar and keeping us uh, in the loop with everything. We do appreciate it. Uh, if you have not subscribed, go ahead and do so and uh, hit that notification bell so you guys can see when we post new videos. We got another video coming up here, hopefully in the next week or two. 
uh, out to you guys. Should be some cool stuff. So make sure you stay tuned for that. As always, guys, my name's Brandon. That's Frankie. This is the 7-3 Garage. We will see you next time.